there's sure. two main types of tests that we use. We have the tests that are really good at detecting active infection when someone may have symptoms or was recently exposed to someone who was infected, and those would be the PCR and antigen tests. Then we have the other type of test, which is very good at detecting evidence of past infection. Those detect antibodies. We call them serology tests. PCR, it stands for polymerase chain reaction, but what it really means, just in layman's terms, is it's detecting the virus's genetic code, its molecular material, which in this case of this virus is RNA. So it's detecting its gen the virus's genetic code that it uses to replicate itself and make more virus. The antigen test detects proteins from the virus rather than molecular information. It's actually looking at the proteins that make up the virus. The antibody test detects your own host's immune response, your own body's response to fighting off the virus by detecting something called antibodies. That's part of your immune response that helps attack foreign invaders like viruses. The viral load refers to the amount of virus that we have in our bodies. But what it usually means when people say high viral load, it refers to the amount of virus that's detected in that nasal swab when we've done testing, usually by PCR. Now PCR can give us a general amount, a general indication for how much virus is present in that sample, although usually it doesn't measure the specific amount. But we can get a general idea of if the patient has a high viral load or a low or a moderate viral load. Now why is this important? If someone has a high viral load, they are potentially shedding that virus into the environment and they could be infectious to others. They could transmit that virus to other people around them. COVID tests that are on the market that have been reviewed by the FDA are very specific for COVID. They don't give you a false positive if you had influenza, for example. They're specific only for SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID. The test that most people receive will not tell them what variant they have. It will be just a yes or no answer. They either have the virus or they don't in the specimen that was tested. Um, there's another test that we can perform to see what variant people have, but it's not usually performed for patient care, meaning that it's not usually important for how the patient's going to do clinically. It's something more that our public health officials want to know so that they can monitor the spread of the virus and the different variants throughout our community. If someone has symptoms that are consistent with COVID-19, they should be tested. If they've also been exposed to someone who has proven COVID-19, the recommendation is now for them also to be tested, even if they've received a vaccine. So speaking just about the vaccines we have in the US, studies have thankfully shown that they are still very good at protecting us against the Delta variant. It looks like it is greater than 85% effective from protecting us against symptomatic infection, even with the Delta variant. Um, it's a little less for just infection without symptoms, but the chance of you actually getting ill is low, and it's even lower um, the risk of you getting a very serious infection where you'd actually have to go to the hospital.